Welcome to the Gorilla Collective, a three-day digital festival of game announcements, trailers, and demos streamed straight to you. Please welcome your host, Game Awards trending gamer, Greg Miller. Welcome back to the final day of the Gorilla Collective. For the last two days, we've been showing you brand new games, debuting trailers, and even releasing titles on the spot. But today's my favorite day, honestly. Today, the developers are going to speak directly to you about their projects in a laid-back live stream. You, of course, hang out in the chat, they show you their cool games, and we all get to find our next favorite title. Sound good? Then, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. This is your final day of the Gorilla Collective. Alex, Justin, take it away. What is happening, everybody? Welcome to the Gorilla Collective Day 3. It has been an amazing experience the last two days. We are showing over 80 games. We got seven games today that we're going to be showcasing. Uh, and a little bit about me. I am the co-founder of the Media Indie Exchange, The Mix. I helped to produce the Gorilla Collective along with some of the most amazing producers. I mean, publishers and developers from around the world. Um, I'm also a game developer and that type of thing, and I'm gonna chop it up with you guys. And sitting next to me is the amazing... Oh, Alex it's... Wilmer, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Alex Wilmer. Uh, I uh, co-founded an audio production company uh, here in Berkeley. Um, we uh, also have studios in uh, South Korea and in Ireland. And we work around the clock on video games, animated cartoon series, film, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and we're here in Wilmer Sound. I mean, uh, just a little bit about the Gorilla Collective, like I was saying, um, due to the lack of E3, we were like, let's get together the mix and a bunch of publishers and developers and let's do this thing ourselves independently. Um, so what you see around here, we basically built up a studio within his studio to make this happen. And we've been grinding to make this happen along with the developers here. Um, so this is gonna be a really cool experience. We have, uh, like I said, seven games coming up. And uh, last week we did uh, the Black Voices in gaming stream, which is amazing. And it's just been crazy, as everyone knows, with COVID, Black Lives Matter, that type of, all those things happening. Um, we do have a charity. If you could pop the charity up, you can, those are our sponsors, but it's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do have a charity um, that you could donate through Tiltify, the NAACP, UNICEF, and Game Heads. Um, if you wanna donate, anything that you, you put forth for that is very, very helpful. Um, so the next couple hours, we'll be showing you games, chat with teams, learn more about these games, amazing creators, like some of them I'm a fanboy for, I guess, I bet you guys are too, and check out the chat because they are in the chat, even though you guys are clowning, folks, the <laughs> cylinder is coming towards the end of the show, guys. Um, yeah, but let's roll over to our first trailer and get right into it. This is Iron Harvest. Peggy, 18. We were all busy with our own small lives. Didn't know what went on in secret. Didn't see the war coming. They said the war would be won within months. An adventure promising pride and honor. In the end, it would be five years. Years of torment and horror like the world had never seen before. The Great War that was supposed to end all wars is over. While in secret, the seed is sown for the next war. But this time, we're vigilant and we'll fight.
And that was the dope trailer for Iron Harvest. We got Tobias on the line um, talking about the game. We're going to be playing the game. This dude is going to be driving. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hey, hey. Thank you for having me, guys. That's you got like you look really crispy right now. The beard is is <laughs> exquisite, by Thank the way. Thank you very much. Yeah. On, on point. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So yeah, um, I was we were playing through the game the other day, um, the demo, and the game is really interesting. Just I mean, did you did you guys have a Kickstarter back in the like a while ago? Yes, that that's right. Everything started with the Kickstarter. It was uh, in 2018, if I uh, yeah. remember correctly. And yeah, so that's a Kickstarter uh, project. And now, two years after, we are uh, right in front of releasing the game. So that's, we're, we're super excited about that. That's dope. Because I remember when the kick... I was actually... I don't know if you heard about Fig, but I actually uh, was publishing at Fig, and I was like looking through games. And when you guys were on Kickstarter, I was like, oh my god, this is so awesome. You had such great artwork and and animatics and that type of stuff that you were showcasing i was like i can't wait for this game to come out and then when i saw that you guys were you're uh pushing your game for you know to showcase in the gorilla club i was like, oh my god we have to play this and then right now uh so let's let's switch alex is going to be playing i it's so interesting that you guys mm -hmm. chose to uh to start with this kind of um tutorial where you're actually little kids <laughs> I was like, this is fascinating mm -hmm. and amazing. Yes, uh, exactly. So uh, the game, for those who don't know, it's an RTS, right? So a real-time strategy game. But here in this tutorial, we somehow need to teach the uh, people how, how the mechanics work, uh, right? So we thought it's a pretty cool uh, way to make it in this kind of uh, snow fight scene because not only does it give you the... Uh, like basics of the game but it also gives you some background story of the main characters of the game because this young lady there is anna who's the hero for the polania faction and it gives the characters actually way more mm, substance i'd say yeah for sure it, uh, it, it's always good to have like an organic feel when you're doing that as, as opposed to it just being this like really stiff like you have to read a bunch of texts you know a bunch of text mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. What was your? Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no. Pr press A and D to move the camera and stuff. So here it's like a little bit more gamification, right? Yeah. So that's the word, I guess. <laughs> yeah. True. So what was your? Uh, what was the inspiration behind uh, Iron Harvest? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, or the biggest in, in, like, gameplay wise, the biggest inspiration are games like Company of Heroes, Dawn of War, and Warcraft 3. So it's more this uh, classical RTS. And like gameplay wise, the, the closest is probably Company of Heroes. If you remember that game where you have to take yeah, cover, yeah. you cannot just simply send your troops uh, to the front line. You have to protect them and keep them alive because they are very precious and very expensive. So it's a very tactical and, and strategic RTS, actually. And from the uh, world and the design, it's inspired and uh, by Jakub Kozalski, which is a Polish artist, his artwork. And he actually created this 1920 plus universe that's uh, oh. also in the name Iron Harvest. There's like a that's subtitle cool. 1920 plus. That's the name of the universe. And in this universe, you have an alternative post World War I, uh, where the people, instead of tanks, were using giant mechs actually to uh uh yeah to to fight and um we call this era the diesel punk area so steampunk is a little bit earlier yeah. cyberpunk later and this uh, 1900s uh, uh is the diesel punk era and that's where we are playing and this is where uh, everything what where's everything based on that's that's super interesting so mm -hmm. uh, yeah so what role do you play on the team just curious Excuse me. Come again. What What do you do on the team? I'm just curious. Oh yeah. So I'm Toby. I'm the PR manager for this okay. uh, for this game. So I'm I'm the one who's uh, showing his beard into the camera and <laughs> tell you how great the game is. But actually, uh, actually, yeah, I, I'm taking the game. I'm traveling the world with it, and I'm trying to show it to the people. And actually, that's what we did since the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Uh, showing the game and collecting feedback, and that's what, what we are also doing right now. Uh, there's a closed beta for uh, Iron Harvest, but the 
big announcement, if I can say it like that. From tomorrow, there will be a demo on Steam, so everyone can try at least a little bit of Iron Harvest before it actually releases. And that's important for us because we are collecting feedback and try to implement as much as possible uh, into the game. If there's a multiplayer component where you're fighting against your friends and that type of thing. Uh, very right. So uh, in this RTH, of course, there's a big campaign. That's the part which is uh, inspired by uh, Warcraft 3, so with the hero oh, okay. units and the deep, uh, deep uh, single-player campaign. So there will be uh, planned right now 21 missions uh, for the single-player campaign. But of course, as you said, there's also a multiplayer, which I like a bit more than the single-player, but just me personally, because uh, I believe that having this huge mech fight, stomping through buildings, outrunning your opponent, outsmarting your friend, is even more interesting than fighting AI. But that's just me. So if you are yeah. more into the single-player part, then go ahead. He got defeated. <laughs> what can in, you tell in us the tutorial? In the tu yeah, in the tutorial <laughs> with snowballs. Nah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Well, no diesel. Uh, not looking no diesel, much, yeah. but ha ha hard ice. You can try a skirmish <laughs> battle if you want, because then you okay. can see more than just throwing ice. Yeah. And then if you if you're quick enough, you will be even able to to build some mix and show the people how the Hey, someone in the chat is writing Snowpunk. Yeah, Snowpunk. Snowpunk. That that's is, the that's tu tutorial, dope. exactly. That's dope. That's really dope. Can you tell us a, a little bit about yeah. the story while we get back and go try a skirmish? Of course. So the story is, well, in this 1920 plus universe, there's three factions in, well, there's more factions, but in the game, there's three factions. We have Polania, which is something like alternative Poland. Uh, Rusviet, something like alternative Russia and uh, Saxony, which is something like alternative Germany, and they are fighting each other in in Iron Harvest. So, and the idea is that, I don't want to spoil too much about the single player, of course, but the idea is that uh, there is some kind of super weapon, somehow, somehow, someone has it, some, some, everyone wants it, and all the campaigns are actually trying to get to this point. Who gets the weapon? Who will take uh, charge? Who will be the powerful? Uh, sourced in the end of the game and uh, that's like a uh, big overview of the campaign but of course uh, for every f campaign for each faction we have seven missions so you will uh, see the different angles on the game and the different parts of the game from different views and uh, eventually find out that who seems bad isn't that bad and so on so there's some plot twists and stuff and the missions should be as unique as possible Cool. You're, you're gonna have to. Other. You're gonna have to run us through this as he starts getting things mm -hmm. I'm going to moving. Iron Mines. So first of all, exactly. So that's the Company of Heroes style gameplay where you have. There's no. If you if you think of a, a Command Conquer or something, you have to collect your Tiberium here. You have to conquer those iron mines and oil pumps, and they will then over time uh, generate some resources for you so you the big idea is it's it's something like moving the front line back and forth all the time you have to recapture resource points they will generate something but the opponent can take them from you at every moment and so on the two units you have right now is regular rifleman and engineers those engineers uh with the uh yeah these ones exactly they have they are uh, building base they're pretty much building your base so if you push h or put on the building push the building button on the bottom right when you uh, click the engineer then you can build some some uh, buildings like barracks and and a workshop in your in your base and as i said it's moving the front line back and forth so on the mini map on the left side you can see how the opponent oh, is slowly cool. conquering resource points and those uh, flags <laughs> there and it's it's a bit like capture the flag so if if the opponent takes them then there's a counter which you can see on the top the winning points, victory points, which I personally don't like. I'm for the inhalation, fighting the opponent till yeah. the end. But yeah, winning, sneaky win with victory points is of course also possible. There's no snowballs so here. If you, if, no snowballs. Yeah, if, bullets if, if you, if you, <laughs> I'm attacking these guys. <laughs> oh, they ran you, away. Yes, exactly. You can, they saw you probably, and or they took the oil pump, and then now they're getting something different. So on the map, you have the oil pump, you have crates. In those crates, they can be weapons, they can be uh, resources, they can be, uh, for ex 
there's field gun, for example, weapons lying around, and you can adapt on the battlefield while playing the game. And pr the coolest thing, I believe, is not only the covering system that you have to take cover when you're attacking someone, but when you have a mech or something, then you can walk through buildings and just ignore all the cover because they're way too big and will just stomp through. That's awesome. I would heavily recommend to start building an base because you took all your units especially the engineers who is not good at shooting uh -huh. and you took them to yeah this house yes the house button if you click on the house button the, then you can one? build for example the barracks barracks or workshop and put okay. it in the base it's the thing you neglected in the very first <laughs> moment <laughs> yeah. Tobias going in on Alex uh, learning is fun yeah. <laughs> although I painful. mean it's it's as always. It's you have to get the basics, and then and that's why the the snowball. Uh, that's what the snowball uh, tutorial was trying to teach you. That, of course, how to move on the battlefield, but also how to build your uh, base and take care of it. Our barracks is under attack. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> my barracks is so under attack. So it's getting. Oh, I. By the way, my. I'm trying to right now talk to you via my cell phone, and I'm using mobile data. So if anything happens, then uh, yeah. just so you know, <laughs> they'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, it's good. Uh, but it seems to work. So I have my makeshift streaming. No, here. your your stream is amazing. By the way, when we we saw your camera, it's like better than like ninety percent other. You know what I mean? Looks super pristine. <laughs> Thank you, cell phone manufacturer. I feel like I have uh, lost all my units I, and my base. So you, you were learn you were learning the hard way. How about we start again? And <laughs> okay. you, you you use one of those units you have there, the rifleman, uh -huh. to capture resource points, and the other one, the engineers, to immediately start to build something, and then okay. you send out the engineers as well. So, I'll so let's restart. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For instance. Are you sure you want to restart? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, so, I do. I sure am. <laughs> of of course, of course, it's uh, the base building is just well. Th the focus is not on the base building. You need a base to be able to build units. Of course, uh, that's where you get your your uh, max and your soldiers. However, the the uh, focus on the game will always be on the front line of the battlefield. So what? actually that uh, happens is that you're trying to protect your resource points at all at all time you are trying to push the the enemy back and so on and what's what's really interesting you maybe you saw it when your units died uh, whenever you kill a, 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 a human unit they will drop their weapons so let's say you are kill, killing i don't know a flamethrower unit then you can tell your engineers to pick up the flamethrowers and they upgrade to become flame for units so a uh, potentially weak unit becomes a potentially very strong unit however you then lose the engineers and become flame for so this gives you a lot of independence and and flexibility on the battlefield which is pretty cool so let's say the opponent is attacking you with tanks or something and you really need to get some cannons quickly to get them down and to tank cannons then just try to pick up cannons if if you're lucky enough to find them anywhere somewhere so so, we have to collect. We have to push for more resources. So you can either pick up the crates lying around. You can see them on the map. There, are those white boxes. Those are weapon crates or resource crates. I see. Or, uh, yeah, exactly oh, those cool. ones. And if you, it's a weapon crate. So inside there will be a weapon, but there's also oil crates and uh, iron crates. And if you if you uh, yeah go to the resource points, then you can capture them as well. In your HQ, the building, the only building you have currently, you can also build uh, basic units. So you could build another engineer, for example. So you have three units instead of two. What is very important for you, I guess, is the retreat button. So once you once one of your units. Uh, no, you are laughing, but actually it really helps you to survive because in, in same as in Company of Heroes, you cannot uh, afford to rebuild so many units, so you need to keep them alive. At exactly, you push, you perfect, perfect. You just push the uh, R button or the uh, button on the bottom right, oh, and nice. they will get a hit, hit, they will get a hit point bonus, and they are running back to their HQ where you can repair them or heal them. 
Okay. Oh, so cool. once they arrive at the at, the, at, at your HQ, they will lose this small arrow on the head, and if you push R again, you will replenish the unit. Okay. R or the bottom bottom the top left uh, button. So Tobias, when is uh, when is the release? Yeah. The release uh, is on the well, but this joke only works in Europe. However, the game is called 19, uh, Iron Harvest 1920 plus 1920, which is the first of oh, September 2020. Okay. okay, nice. Only only works in Europe though. So uh, it's in, in a few in a few weeks in a few months. There's the uh, uh, Iron Harvest is releasing, mm -hmm. but. And that's a very important and very cool part. From tomorrow, you can get your demo on Steam for free. So you can try it for several days. So it's from June 16th to uh, June 22nd. You can try it, give your feedback, and try to stay alive a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely be practicing. The game is the game is awesome. It's it's very gorgeous. I love you know playing the beginning part of it. I'm definitely going to be playing it. Uh, you can wish list it now. Exactly. So yes. go Steam, Epic, wherever, whatever shop you like, go there and you can wishlist it and try it if you go to Steam. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tobias. It was, it was amazing having you. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was great. Yeah, for sure. All right. That was um, Iron Harvest, King Art Games, Tobias. Um, the game is really fun. It's cool. It take it obviously like takes a minute to really get into. It's a RTS, um, but the there, game. Is yeah, there's a lot of strategy um, in that game, which is really cool. Uh, it's amazing to see like the the dynamic cover too. The way that like you go behind the the cover and they automatically, you know, take cover and stuff. It's 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 really cool. It's the kind of thing you need like plenty of time to kind of f figure out obviously <laughs> yeah, sure. but but uh that's the kind of thing that i would i would lose many hours playing for sure okay so up next we have say no more marius winter roll the trailer sir Welcome, intern. And we're destroyed by your co-workers. Make me coffee. Copy these papers. Bad hair day alert. Your supervisor your... probably just stole your lunch. Thanks, intern. And the problem is, you are too shy to say something. I don't see coffee. But don't worry. All you need is just one word. It's the word no. No. Whoa. You work late today. No. Whoa. Be nice to our supervisor. No. No. Clean the coffee maker. No. Good. No. Oh, right. Yes, you learned well. No. Big way. No. No. Oh. Hey, keep it down. No. Hey, let's go. No. Oh, okay, you can. No, 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 no. 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 Hey, no. Oh, yes. What is this madness? Your outfit is bad. <laughs> oh. You're being weird. Stop clapping. Hey, what are you doing? No, I was just projecting. That was Say No More. This game is looks really hilarious. Um, we got Marius on the line. Oh, hey. How's Hello. it going? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two. Awesome. Did, you, did you play one of the voices? For the game, I did. Uh, uh, these were all placeholder voices by me. Yes. Oh, okay. Because like, yeah, I was. It's the game is super hilarious. By the way, um, I I kept playing it over and over again the other day. It reminds me of um, old school PS one games, which may be like what your influence is. Um, but there's one in particular called Incredible Crisis that I used to love. And, it, and like, I would just keep playing through that game. And this is like dead on. I'm like, when I saw this game, I think I saw it um, a while ago. You guys were going to show it at G uh, the Mix GDC or something like that. And and I was like, oh, my God, we got to check this game out. Um, so we finally got our hands on it. Alex is going to play through it. It's hilarious. Um, you have to talk about like how you came up with this this idea. Thank you so much. 
Uh, yeah, very cool. If you look at our inspiration document, Incredible Crisis is one of the games uh, that inspires this game. Also, Muscle March uh, on the Wii, you, uh, on the Wii uh, was also a big inspiration. Um, muscle March? I but need yeah, to they... write that down. Oh, Muscle March is amazing. You all have to Google it now. Um, but it's in the in uh, it's an old Wii game. I don't know if you can play it anymore, but. Anyway, uh, this is more in terms of the art style and humor what inspires this game, but uh, the original inspiration came, so um, my friend Nick and I, we both came up with this game and we both are game designers at Studio Fitzpin and we know each other since kindergarten. So we grew up together and played games together. That's cool. And humor. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago we were playing around with Unity and making weird prototypes and one thing that that we uh, want to have in video games that we rarely get is imagine in games where you can jump and there's an NPC and if you jump in front of the NPC just jumping around <laughs> they don't react to that and we yeah. want games where they are like why are you jumping around this is not normal what are you doing <laughs> yeah. like this is this is these are games that we want. And so we made a little game in an office environment where people talk to you and you can only answer, um, there are four th things you can say. You can say yes, no, maybe, or interesting. What do you think? Just, and, and they always react to whatever you say. Yeah, the and social, then you can imagine uh, that, sorry, go, go on. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Okay, <laughs> and you can imagine the most fun part was to say no to everyone yeah. without context, just always saying it. And, and so we figured, let's just throw away all the other things. Let's, let's just focus on no. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. <laughs> where, are you, where are you guys from? We are from Germany. We are oh, okay. from Aschaffenburg. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. The uh, the social interaction aspect of it is really, really interesting. And I like how you layered it. Like, at first you can't say anything. And then you get this motivational... And you'll see it. I'm, I'm spoiling everything. But, <laughs> but That's you, okay. get, you get, like, this motivational speaker telling you how to say no. And then you get this motivational speaker telling you how to laugh in someone's face. Like, to, to startle them or mess with their mind. And, and just those layers uh, and the, the interaction... Um, and the body language and that type of thing is very fresh. It's interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's um, what also came after. So when we when we knew, like, let's make a fun little game about just saying no. We also only then noticed, like, hey, wait a minute. We both are scared of saying no as well. Like, it's hard. We, we would rather say yes in a lot of situations than no. And we, we noticed like, oh, this makes so much sense that we want to make this game. We want to be better at saying no. And um, it's not like that we, we, we actually, we didn't have bad internships or something like that. The, yeah. the, the office environment is just the setting of this game. Yeah. But a lot about the game is just about, you know, things where you would, I, I personally think, for example, if I get invited to a party of a good friend and I just don't want to go, but I still go. Yes. Because I don't want to be, because I feel like a bad friend if I say no. Yes. And so this game is, is about this. <laughs> I think a lot of us have that trouble, especially if you're like creative or, you know what I mean? Like any, anytime someone asks me to do something, I want to take on the challenge personally. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. This is the this is the yeah, part. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. This is the part I'm talking about, though. The motivational speaker. <laughs> no. Use this button. Say it with me. No, 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 no. Right on this jerk. No, 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 no. Wow, not bad. You can also say no in a different way. No. To a cold no by pressing this button. Just walk back to your heated no, press this. <laughs> no. It's dark, no. no, you prefer. The choice is yours. No. Now show this meaty what you got. Danger. No. <laughs> yeah! That's hilarious. Listen, I know it's outrageous saying no these days, but if you don't
one Steelers. Do you want that? No. Exactly. No. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Before destroying jerks with a juicy nose, confuse them like heck juicy. by laughing at them. I love this Hold part. This button to laugh at this dude. <laughs> or you can clap at them with this button. The choice is yours. Okay. <laughs> I feel awkward. Okay. Know him. Know him. Laugh at idiots to feel better. I don't know why. Laugh at idiots? Make them feel weird. Oh, what? Oh. I'm actually small. You did it. I like it. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I want. I like games where I can where I can irritate NPCs. Yeah. So just doing a slow clap. <laughs> to subscribe to my channel. I like say no to this jerk. Did you see my new lunchbox? No. Excuse me. What did you say? What? What? He busted a combo on his face. You are just an intern. Uh, fire that intern supervisor. No, 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 Oh, interesting. <laughs> I was just rapid firing no everywhere. <laughs> Try to find fun. a nice yeah, person. I, this, game, this game supports spamming the space bar. Definitely. Okay, that's it. Oh, you got blasted, son. <laughs> yes. Lunch stealers. Flip the tape. Flip the tape. Flip the tape. <laughs> there are more lessons. <laughs> what happened? Did you got crushed by a jerk who won't listen to you? No. Know? <laughs> what a bunch. But don't worry. I'm here to teach you a new a kind bunch. of no. When, are, when is this game being released? No. And like on what platforms? Uh, to do is later this know. year. Okay. And I always joke about I uh, like an Iron ha Iron Harvest. I also have a joke for the release. I hope we can release in November nine. Wow. <laughs> because nine in German is also no. <laughs> um, we, that is amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> if, 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 I would go so far if we miss that date. We we just wait a year for next November 9, 2021. <laughs> That's so good. Or maybe not. I don't know. But but officially, no, we don't have a, a exact date yet. But later this year. Is there is there gonna uh, be a demo out for this for people to play? Or not yet? Uh, yeah. There there's also a demo on uh, Steam. Okay. Uh, in the on the on the Steam Game Fest. So so. Oh, cool. Yeah, shout out to Valve for uh, working with the Gorilla Collective and all and all the devs for uh, to get our games up. <laughs> I don't know why why you're saying the uh, dialogue is temp. I I would I would keep this. <laughs> it's solid, and this is coming from so a, no. like a VO expert. Like, <laughs> this is a sound studio. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I actually will voice a lot of characters, but we. Uh, we casted a couple more actors, so <laughs> there's there's more variety. <laughs> the dialogue is hilarious. And so, did you write all the dialogue? Uh, I wrote it together with Brandon Gibbons. Oh, so okay. we so we basically this was also um, <laughs> there's uh, <laughs> like this was one of the technical challenges, like having uh, building the tools for us to put in. A lot of the creative choices, yeah. and yeah, we, we basically in each level we just write in a big sheet. We just write the jokes, That's from top great. to bottom, and there was there was it was just you just write them and then they are in, and it was um, yeah, it, it was a really fun experience writing the jokes because it was 
a lot like a lot of elements in this game is just like here's a funny thought i write it down and it's in, done we, there, there are a lot of things where we don't think too much about them and if yeah. they make us laugh from, from the beginning then we keep in the, the silly stuff because there's a lot of encounters you have in this game this yeah. is just the first of eight levels well we are not going to spoil the end of this this uh demo for everybody <laughs> It, it's, it's so this this game is so amazing. Um, everybody wish list it um, and check out the game soon. Nine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, thank you so much, Maris. Um, did it, where can they follow the game and where can they check everything out? Uh, we now have a Twitter account. It's today. It's uh, at Sayonoma underscore game. And um, and also our webpage is saynomo.re. And yeah, this is the the this is the way you get the news and all the newest news. <laughs> yeah, cool. I didn't Thank practice you. this. Yeah. <laughs> you were waiting. I see myself no. on the screen, like you should have <laughs> told me no. You know. <laughs> but yeah, no. thanks so much. The game is like really refreshing. You know, to see something like brand spanking new and different keep making these type of games i think we need to celebrate this kind of ingenuity and, and interesting uh kind of design so yeah very cool thanks for coming Thank on <laughs> thanks for having me all right Bye. say no more say no more justin okay i, I definitely won't <laughs> um the game that game is is freaking hilarious um it's definitely up my alley what we have next is Tanya Short with Boyfriend Dungeon. Uh, let's roll the trailer, please. That was the amazing trailer for Boyfriend Dungeon, the highly anticipated game from Kit Fox Games. And we have Tanya chilling out with us. Hello. How's it going? It's all right. You know, it's a Monday and there's super cool indie games being uh, shown by Gorilla and Steam. So it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. It's a great day. Thanks uh, for hopping on. Um, the game looks amazing, by the way. I know a lot of people Thank are you. anticipating it. And we're yeah, we've in. gotten a lot of wish lists, a lot of attention, and uh, it's it's a shame we can't you know go to conventions anymore. But uh, I'm glad that there's events like this, so people can still find out about it and and see what they like. And and this demo has never been shown outside of a convention floor, so this is pretty nerve wracking, but also exciting. <laughs> yeah, oh, that totally makes sense. I remember like when we were show we were working with you guys to showcase it last year. We were trying to get you on the stream, and you're like, not not yet, not yet, not yet. You know, but so this is, it's cool to actually be able to uh, to showcase it. So tell us a bit, yeah, uh, a bit about you. the game. So it's a dating sim slash dungeon crawler, and you alternate between the, the two parts of the game. Um, you spend a lot of time in the dungeon, and in that dungeon you find treasure, and you fight monsters, and you find new weapons, and then those weapons become uh, beautiful people, and if you want to get more <laughs> skilled with that weapon and find new abilities, then you got to date them. Um, you could also just be friends. Uh, platonic uh, weapon relationships are possible. Um, but yeah, you choose who you want to hang out with, and then you choose who you want to fight with. And meanwhile, there's uh, you know other people you can you can text message here, go shopping, um, live your best life in Verona Beach, California. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What what was the um, inspiration behind behind your game coming up with this? It's a really interesting idea. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I grew up playing dungeon crawlers and RPGs and dating sims, and there's a few other games that have, you know, decent combat and, and decent dating, but I never felt like I was able to date all the people I wanted to, and 
I don't know. I also felt like sometimes they were a little bit too serious. So oh, I, I guess I wanted a, something a little bit lighter and I wanted to be able to, to date all the different kinds of people. And uh, I was surprised a few years ago that, you know, the, that game still didn't really exist. So we had to make it. it totally makes sense. It kind of reminds me like when I first played it or saw it, it kind of re initially reminded me of Persona, the old, like the mm -hmm. one of the first two personas and then um also it reminded me just the idea of the weapons having kind of their own personality uh was disgaea just a little bit but it's it's interesting that you have that aspect that each one of these characters is a weapon you know so we can see he's picking a, an upgrade uh, ability there, and um, you can go back and change that later in the in the full game. There's a gym where you can you can change up your your combos that you've picked. Um, but yeah, every level of love rank up, you'll you'll get either a new ability or a choice of two abilities. And uh, yeah, we took. Okay, you're a swinger then. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Um, I chose I mean, our main. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we took inspiration from a lot of different places. I feel like we came up with something that's pretty unique. Um, but yeah, I, I love each of the weapons because they're all so different. How many weapons are there in the game? So in the Kickstarter that we ran a couple of years ago, we announced nine. It looks like we're probably going to launch with seven and then have two uh, come out as a free DLC afterwards. Okay, cool. At least I... free for Kickstarter backers. I We haven't decided if we're going to charge after that. Makes sense. I can imagine that your the creativity on your team goes wild trying to come up with new weapons. You know what I mean? Oh my god, there's this one that we want to create and there's that one, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's so many different kinds of weapons out there and different... I was really surprised to find that so many people had a fondness for a certain kind of weapon. Um, and, you know, seven isn't, you know, uh, Borderlands or anything, number of weapons. <laughs> but hopefully there's a, a good range of different kinds of personalities and different kinds of swords. And, uh, and then there'll be something for everybody, I hope. So when you but yeah, there's four four guys and two women and and two non-binary people. Oh, okay, interesting. And then a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's a, I did not see that yes. one coming. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's little brass knuckles. Nice. You just oh, got a transformation great. sequence. It's so sick. Mm. Yeah, this is Tawar. He's uh, going back to his human form to flirt better. So tell us a little bit about the dungeon crawling sequence. Yeah, so after this date, I assume you'll you'll go into the dungeon. Um, it's randomly generated, and the first the first dungeon that you unlock is a mall dungeon, um, and the dungeons are manifestations of your own fears and insecurities. So it's sort of like a form of therapy that's a little bit more violent. <laughs> okay. And so you're gonna I'm not gonna spoil what all the symbolism is of, of the different enemies in, in the mall dungeon. But then later, a nightclub dungeon is also unlocked. Um, and you, you'll get to know this whole town over the course of the game. But the yeah, so far, we're planning two full dungeons, and then also a, a mini dungeon for the boss fight. And okay. we'll see if there's more for the, the DLC as well. But there's 12 floors you have to fight through. And if you make it through four floors, you'll earn an elevator. You'll unlock an elevator so you can you can skip through the first four floors. Okay, cool. And you said they're randomly generated every time. Randomly generated, yeah. Cool. And there's so there's these uh, different enemies you can fight, and uh, you're gonna level up um, both in terms of love with your weapon that you're wielding, but also you yourself will gain experience points and level up your wielder level. So that's your like overall strength. And there's also little hangouts you can find in the dungeon. So little little places you can go and, and spend a few second, a few extra minutes together to like unwind and, oh. and enjoy the scenery. Use your boba, son. Use your boba. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta heal yourself with your, oh, your bubble yeah. tea. Although we have signs, you, you can change that if you you know if you're not a big fan of bubble tea, you can always get uh, coffee. Boyfriend Dungeon supports different kinds of beverage. <laughs> nice. So. 
Can you unveil like one, like one of the metaphors behind the um, enemies? I know you don't want to spoil too much, but I, you're hitting cell phones and TVs. Well, I'll say that in the tutorial, um, you're sort of guided through this with S-Stock. S-Stock sort of teaches you the, the basics of sword fighting and also like what the dungeon is about. And he says there's a few possibilities. He thinks maybe it has to do with, you know, feeling a little bit cold and stagnant. Like what, what, why are they all sort of older technologies? And so it's about oh, a fear of stagnation. Is it about a fear of getting outdated? Um, is it a fear of technology? You know, you, you'll find out as you go. But um, the main the main focus of the game is the relationship with your weapons. But there is sort of this undercurrent of uh, of you as a player being this this person who's never dated anyone before, and you move to a new town, and you go to the dungeon, and you fight monsters, and meet all these beautiful people, and uh, hopefully you're confronting your fears a little bit too. But yeah, you can see if you if you if you vary up your um, light attacks and heavy attacks, you'll get different combos. And since you unlocked your your level two now, you're gonna have um, bleeding effects on the enemies. And so as you level up with with Tawar, you'll get better and better options for how to how to control your bleeding effects and uh, and get more damage over time going on more different kinds of enemies. But that's Tawar's specialty. Okay. It looks like there's a treasure chest, but it depends if you wanna if you wanna go deeper, go get that treasure chest. Oh. I'm looking at your your mini map in the upper right. Oh, upper right. Oh, the, is it the staircase? Is that what that is? The staircase is how you how you uh, move Exit. further down. Oh, but there's a tre treasure chest. A, yeah, right. Oh, right, right, right. uh, down this way. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's up to you. You don't have to. Let's let's go. Have to the collect treasure. all the treasure. You need to. It's, they tend <laughs> to be recipes that you can. Oh, it's an uh, ambush. Ambush. Um, but yeah, you'll you'll find there. recipes, so you can craft different um, armors or different um, hats or different outfits oh, yeah. um, or <laughs> gifts. You can you can craft gifts to give to your your dates when you're out with them on the town. So when you go back home, you're able to craft different things with your recipes, or do, is it like uh, right. in the dungeon during combat? No, no, no. You you get um, materials and recipes in the oh, dungeon. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Plastic is a new ingredient you've just found. Um, but yeah, no, when you go back home, you can craft stuff and then take out with you. Oh, nice. And although it's not in the demo, in the demo you can't craft, but it's it's working in the in the real game, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you it's working. What are, what are you uh, launching on? We have announced that we're launching on PC and Mac and Switch. Cool, nice. We don't have a release date, I'm sorry. It's not. Totally get that. <laughs> totally understand. It's the, ready uh, when, it, when it's ready. The pandemic and everything is uh, making it difficult. I think we, we had wanted to announce a date by now, but uh, well, we're doing our best. We, we want the game to be really good. That's that's what we really want. We want all of this to be as good as it can be before it uh, gets out into everyone's hands. And you I think guys our Kickstarter backers have really high expectations. So. It makes sense. You guys killed it with your Kickstarter, which is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was really fun. We we met a lot of really great people. We Our Discord blew up. We have a lot of really lovely folks of all different kinds that are cheering us on. And so it, we're not afraid of launching. We just really want it to be good. Because, you know, at this point, we've spent over four years on it. and. It'd be a shame to spend four years and then release something that you didn't think was great, you know? Yeah, for sure. Same boat. I um, mean, no matter what, you always have things you're, you're going to want to change <laughs> after launch, but... Yeah, totally. Yeah. How, so are you in Montreal? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. Montreal studio. How is your and team, the team oh, yeah. I was going to say, how's your team Sorry. handling working um, remotely? Pretty good, pretty good. We um we actually already had one work from home day every week anyway. That's cool. Um, so we had the basics set up. Of course, I think people are getting a little bit lonely and restless now that it's been a while. Don't forget to drink your tea. Um, oh, where's my tea? Oh, LB. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, feels feels better. <laughs> oh, you found a vending machine. I wonder what that's about. Um, Get some more. Oh. Five bucks in there. Some rando stuff. Oh, what's gonna happen? Ooh. Let's 
mysterious. Uh-oh. Mm. Secret area. You found a secret. <laughs> That's that looks pretty dope. <laughs> These, these monsters are, are just hanging out. What are they doing? So how do we find out more about the game? Are, is, is a demo coming out soon? Are you going to release a demo not or no? immediately. Okay. We're probably going to wait on the demo for a little bit longer uh, to release it to everybody. But cool. you can wishlist the game on Steam. You can subscribe to our newsletter. If you go to boyfriendungeon.com, you can read more about it. You can join our Discord. You can tweet at us. We have all the boyfriend details for you and the community is really welcoming so if you just want to make some new friends maybe join and chat boyfriend engine with us anytime thanks so much for joining us it's awesome to thanks uh, for having me get the game in our hands and play it i hope boyfriend dungeon <laughs> <laughs> thanks tanya bye that was Tanya from Kit Fox Games, Boyfriend Dungeon, highly anticipated. Their community is crazy. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, up next, wait, let's let's shout out our our sponsors and our partners. Uh, they've been amazing, helping us to make this happen. Idea Xbox, Razor, Wilmer Sounds for for helping put this together. We also want to shout out to our, our media sponsors: IGN, Gamespot, Twitch, of course. Um, the idea at Xbox folks are working with us on Mixer. It couldn't have been possible without you guys. This is all an independent collective of developers and publishers, and they really believed in what we were doing for the movement. Um, also, you can contribute to the charities that we have um, during these crazy times. Um, UNICEF, NAACP, and the Game Heads uh, through our charity link below. It's definitely will help some folks out. Um, but up next, yes, we have 30XX, the sequel to 20XX. Run the Trizailer. That was 30XX, the sequel to 20XX or 2000XX. Um, here we got Chris King. We're going to play the game. Highly anticipated. How's it going? Hello. Good, good. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing the game. When I saw that you guys like of entered course. 30XX, I was like, oh my God. Because like 20XX, like, uh, I mean, for me personally, as a, you know, a developer and, uh, you know, loving Capcom games, that kind of thing, it kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, what is this? At first, I, <laughs> at first I was like, is this a Mega Man clone? And then I was like looking at how you guys were developing it and evolving the game. And it was like, what? This is, you know, obviously it pays homage, but it's a different type of experience. And to see that you guys like made that, it was successful. And then you guys are making this one and the art looks great gorgeous um thank you so can much can you tell us a little bit about the evolution um of what you've done in the genre with this game yeah of course uh so with the first game you know we're obviously we're super happy with how well 20xx uh did for us you know it was our first commercial game uh none of us had made games before it was the first time we'd really come to this uh, and so you know first time game development's really spicy business right uh so so yeah. being able to have the studio still be around at this point is super exciting to us but even after having spent five years making 20XX, uh, we still had so much more that we wanted to do with the formula. Uh, there's still so much room to improve, so much room for the game to grow. Uh, and we knew that getting it to this really like high fidelity, really crisp, punchy pixel art style was where we, we always kind of wanted to take the title in the first place. Uh, and so we knew there was so much more we wanted to do on pretty much every, every side of the game. Uh, so it just made sense to go ahead and make a full sequel. Nice, nice. Uh, I think you should, can we play multiplayer? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, absolutely. We'll, yeah. we'll wait yeah, till we'll he dies. Next if time. he dies, then which will certainly oh, happen. I will die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. So, can you tell us a little bit about like I don't know? I 
I'm obviously interested in the process, but tell us about the game. <laughs> sure. Uh, so 30XX uh, is kind of like the co-op roguelike Mega Man X. So it it controls a lot like the uh, the classic action platformers of, uh, of the 90s era, except with you know far crisper controls than are possible during that area because we uh, we have much better like PC refresh rates now, right? So we're able yes. to process your inputs way faster. So it's going to be crisper than was ever possible back then. Uh, but so it's it's kind of like that action platformer style, but everything's randomly generated every time you play through it. So the level sets you're going to see are going to be different. You're going to get powers in a different order. Uh, so you can make that jump. Yeah. Uh, and your dash by default uh, should be on either right bumper or right trigger, depending on your settings. But maybe don't practice that right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun piece to get right at the beginning of a demo. <laughs> maybe we'll see co-op after all. Uh, so hit those, oh. hit those little crystals as you go. They spawn little oh. platforms. Oh, oh, that was fast. Yeah, We're going to pretend. Up. No, that was very obviously on purpose. So we can test. <laughs> yes, yeah. We, we, yeah we, we're, we're doing, we're doing co-op. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Bingo. That's, yeah, exactly. Go. So go to that little, yeah, hit multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Hit, hit, B, uh, hit couch co-op and then hit A. Do it again, do it again. I'm sorry, hit. Yeah, I think yep. you both hit it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hit B. Okay. So now yeah, we have yeah. one Nina and one Ace. Let's, Sounds let's make this happen. You're going to have to run through this because, you know, playing this style of game and then asking questions is a rough business <laughs> it's tough yeah you really you really gotta focus so you're moving around uh you're dashing uh if you jump yeah. while you dash you're gonna do like a long jump that you can cross much bigger gaps with wait so you dash this is interesting playing now i'm i was talking mad stuff and now i can't even get up oh I get, okay. uh, yeah Life, you gotta life. go a little higher and then you got it. There it I is. Got it. Nice. Okay. Trial by fire. Everything's great. You notice the camera zooms out a bunch in co op. Yeah, that's awesome. It's cool to play this. It's like when I was a. I, I died. But um, as a kid, you always wanted to play these style of games with somebody. So having that component is Bingo. really. That's exactly where we were, right? Uh, we. Yeah, when we, when we first started making 20XX, uh, we really just wanted the ability to have some kind of cooperative play in these kinds of games. Because we always wanted them growing up, right? Uh, you know, growing up, you had to share the controller. Yeah. Uh, you know, your brother wants to play, and <laughs> you have a really hard Forget. lesson very quickly about having difficult chunks at the beginning of a demo that's streamed in front of a bunch of people. Nah, yeah, that's no, okay. it's good. The game, <laughs> the game is challenging, which is, which is great. It is challenging. This is a very uh, early pre-alpha for us. Uh, this is super, super early stuff. Uh, you know, we've obviously spent time polishing the demo, uh, but you know, since it's a roguelike, since we're going to throw random level pieces at you, uh, every so often we're going to have pieces that are maybe a little more difficult than we intend to be really early at the beginning of a demo show up. Like this looks much more reasonable. No required precise <laughs> wall jumps. <laughs> Just probably where you ought to be on level one of a demo. I have some work to do after this. <laughs> but I learned how to jump, you know, do a, a vertical wall jump, which is great. Now I'm going to use Bingo. that tool, you know. You know, ideally though, I teach oh. you to do that without a fire that's going to kill you right there and just wreck you. Oh, he's dead. It did. It uh, okay. yeah, so because it's a roguelike, anytime you fall in lava or touch a spike or anything like that, we're just going to do back. a little bit of damage to you and set you back instead of like straight up killing you. Uh, there are optional difficulty toggles, of course, that let you turn on auto kill spikes, but like pretty unfriendly for a game like this where we expect you to get through on one shot. Gonna... Let's go down. There you go. Ooh. So how is uh, the game laid you... out as far as progression? That is an awesome question. Uh, so in 20XX, there are four basic level themes you play through twice every time you play through a run of the game, where a run of the game is eight levels that are themes, eight main sequence stages that are in a semi-random order. The player has some level of control over the order in which they tackle the stages, but not complete control. So like in a Mega Man game, you finish a stage and there are seven stages left, right? And you can pick whatever one. Yeah. Oh, you're getting chased, run. Ah! <laughs> Got Get smashed around. by the wolf spikes. <laughs> and maybe don't touch the fire. <laughs> so or the, the big spikes. thing you're noticing here, and this is this is critical to our to our process here, right? Is that you're making progress. Each of these runs has gotten further than the last. Yes, uh, sir. we're getting so it, better. <laughs> you are, you are, you absolutely are. We're learning uh, machines. <laughs> yeah, in 30XX, uh, each boss, each main sequence stage has his own entire unique set this time. Oh, oh. it's this piece again. Oh, oh, look, look at, at that. that! See that? I learned it. Learned it, 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 it. Not All even right. close. I'd love to see it. Ooh. Oh, it's this. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. There it is. Nina's got it. 
Okay. Uh, so this should also still work in the demo, but if, uh, if Ace holds B for a couple seconds, you should be able to, like, teleport up to your teammate. Oh. Oh, what? <laughs> B? Just a co-op feature. Oh. And then let it go. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Oh, schnooks. Old that. carryover feature from uh, from 20XX. It's important. You know, one of the things one of the things here is that we want to make sure that when you're playing Oops. 30XX with a friend, <laughs> uh, that it's always uh, it's always a fun experience, regardless of uh, potential like skill disparities between yeah, players. Yeah, I was That's thinking uh, that. One, That's cool. one of the things that can get really tough, uh, especially I think the, the the onus for us adding that was definitely uh, at one at one PAX with 20XX years ago. Uh, we had it was like a young father uh, telling us that he. His kid absolutely loves the game, has so much fun with it, loves the characters, uh, but just really struggles with some of the, the platforming segments. Yeah. Uh, and having the you know the child able to like teleport up, meet the meet the parent, uh, made yeah. their experience a million times better. So we spent a little time shop that and got it in. And of course, uh -huh, uh, we want to awesome. make sure that all of the all of the lessons we Oops. learned while we were making 20xx carry over to 30xx. You know, we don't want to backslide in anything here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say. I haven't even seen this piece. <laughs> I was gonna say for for if you're playing with kids, that's that's really important. That's really awesome that you 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 did that. Yeah, we want the game. You know, so obviously at the at the top end, like with this this kind of game. Hey, a revive capsule. Hey, it's good to know those work in the demo. Free oh. testing. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I'm back. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Game. Uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta make sure that uh, while the game needs to be properly challenging at the top end, like if you're if you grew up with these kind of games, you you want the super spicy, intense, like perfect platforming uh, yeah. that the sort of top or like harder top end of these games really can afford. Hey, box. Hey, some health and some money. I got nice. items. Can he teleport got down to me? <laughs> yeah. So so oh. that well, don't do it on a fire. Uh, yeah. Try it. Go good on it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so it, it should work pretty much anywhere. Oh, okay. Cool. All right, How we're big come is up on this chase section again? Oh, okay, yeah. So we know that we don't want to get hit by the the wolf spikes. Oops. Don't want to get hit by the spikes. Well, <laughs> fire, flame. Oh, no, I no, want to get. Oh, look Everything's at that! Look fine. at my skills on. The... Nothing is broken. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Oh, oh. I thought my. All right, a little further, a little further. Yeah, that I was thought my uh, my skills were impeccable. Level last time. <laughs> we're we're super fun. How big is your team? Uh, there are, it really, it really depends on how you measure. Uh, there are eight or so of us working on 30XX right now, uh, all of which in, in different capacities. You know, if you, if you're adding up everybody's like full-time contributions, it's probably more like six. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's myself doing, uh, tech creative design. Uh, we've got two lovely artists, uh, one doing, uh, characters and sprite work. That's, uh, Clubber Kataki. Uh, if you recognize this kind of sprite style from either like Rogue Legacy or Chasm or Duelist, same guy. Oh, wonderful. yeah. Cool. Uh, the tiles and the backdrops and all that stuff is uh, Fabian Dostromsky, a uh, German environment artist. They've both been lovely. Uh, Brandon Ellis, our composer in Georgia with all the uh, the sweet tunes that you've got to have. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, and we've got a, like, a... Sorry, I'm getting a little too into the weeds about individual team members, but no, everybody it's is good. lovely. It's, They're about eight It's interesting. That's cool. Yeah, Sorry. it's about twice the size of 20XX's team. It's been solid. Uh, so, Marie, you can teleport up. Yeah, I'm gonna teleport over there. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Did you get deaded? All right, I, all right one I, more teleport. He teleported up while you were in midair, and then yeah. he fell back in the hole. Right. I was pretty, wondering. Pretty I was wondering moves. if that was possible, or. Uh... <laughs> but yes, it is. <laughs> so you got to be careful when you teleport. Nice. I like the rogue um, aspects. Just the variety and not knowing exactly what your face, but the skills are maintained. That's really interesting. Exactly. That's that's like that's the core of the design right there, right? So we yeah. love these precise adaptations. We love seeing a situation, thinking, what's in my toolkit that lets me respond to this, uh, and then adapt it and, and mastering the game, right? Uh, we we don't love Mega Man 2's like Heat Man disappearing blocks, where the only way to get it is to like die a bunch of times by falling into the pit with no. No indication of where the blocks are appearing. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> so we throw different pieces at you every time. Uh, obviously, it's a very early roguelike. Like, we're still very early in the process. We're not even on early access yet. We got a ways to go there. Uh, but uh, there's where still a pretty decent amount of level generation here. That's awesome. So when are you releasing? Do you have a, do you have a date? That is a great question. Uh, we don't have a firm date yet. Uh, we're definitely going to do early access. So early access for 20XX 
if anybody watching uh, either played uh, 20XX or saw it during early access, oh, uh, you know that we were in early access for two and a half years, about. Really a long time. Uh, the only reason we're still here, the only reason the studio is still here, the only reason we get to make a new game uh, is because our incredible early access community on 20XX uh, gave us the, the feedback and the, the resources and the, the pushes we need uh, to make the game great. Uh, so we'd be really foolish to not do early access this time around. Uh, so early access is definitely coming. Uh, probably sometime between this fall and next spring. We've been telling people it's like a 70% chance that it's somewhere in that window. Uh, but it depends on a lot of stuff. And then 1.0 is sometime after that. You know, we can't hit a 1.0 release date until we know exactly how much stuff we got to get done in early access. That, to that totally makes sense. The game is gorgeous. It's really, really <laughs> fun to play. And you're, you're releasing you. on... Um, what, what platforms initially? I know you so, said early access, so that'll be yeah, Steam, right? Right, so Steam. Uh, so so PC, PC first for sure. Uh, our, our official line right now is PC and consoles. Uh, we don't know which consoles yet. We're still working on that. Totally makes sense. Can you wish list now? You can wish list now. And as of right this moment, right here, uh, right now, you can actually uh, play our Steam Festival demo, this demo, early, <laughs> now, right now, actually right now. Uh, you can click it and have fun. Uh, you can Google 30XX Steam. It'll probably pop up pretty easily there. Uh, unlike 20XX, we have a little bit better SEO this time around, thankfully. Then, <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can wishlist it, yeah. please. Yeah, wishlist the game. Play the game. The game is really cool. Um, thanks so much for hopping on. Where can we find you and the game? Any last shout-outs? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so proud of the team we've put together. Uh, thank you guys so much, uh, for, for helping us get this game to where it is now. Uh, and I want to shout out the, the community for having been so supportive of us while we've been building it. Uh, without you guys, we, we are nothing and we have nothing. And we're so happy that you're here for the journey. Dope. Thanks you so much. Thanks for <laughs> oh, of course. Thank you guys. Take care. All right. That was 30XX. It's coming along so great. Make sure to uh, wish list it and check out the, their Steam page. Next up, we have West of Dead. Uh, Adam is going to be joining us. Let's roll to the trailer. Purgatory, Wyoming, 1888. A shifting land shaped by the souls of the dead. The good ones head east toward the light. The bad ones, sometimes they stick around when they ain't supposed to. That's where I come in, to change their mind. That was the amazing trailer of um, West of Dead. We got Adam on the line. What is popping, Adam? How you thank doing? You me. Good, very good. Thank you. It's size I like your your poster. Logan is sick. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've got loads of I've got loads of rubbish up here. Loads of dark stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we we've been playing the game. Like, congratulations! It it looks amazing. Oh, thank you. It's so awesome to have you know um, the actors you have involved with it um it's yeah the game is very gorgeous lucky. yeah how did that even even come about well you know i'd like to say it was completely by design 100 percent skill it was our plan the whole time but really it only happened when 
we teamed up with Raw Fury and okay. they saw something a lot bigger in the game than we had the confidence. Being British, we're low on confidence. Um, so <laughs> they had a lot more confidence in the title and what we were making than we presumed to have. So they said, oh, you guys, you know, who would be your ideal you know, actor to be the narrator in this game? And we were like, well, you know, from Perman. <laughs> They'll never <laughs> yeah. get him. And, and they did. So we, we thought they were joking most of the time. And then they said, no, no, we really, we really have got him. And uh, yeah, so that was a bit of a dream come true for us, to be honest. That's cool. Yeah, shout out to Raw Fury. They've been amazing with the, um, working with us on the Gorilla Collective and then showcasing your game. Um, some exclusive stuff was was pretty awesome. I mean, we've been following yeah, this game for be. for a while. Um, and yeah, having Ron Perlman it definitely, you know, adds notoriety, but also to the theme, you know, because it sounds so rich. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. He, he was, yeah, by far the top of our list. So yeah, we're very, very lucky. So tell us about the game and like how you came up with the whole idea, your team came up with the idea and the design. Yeah. Yeah, no, no problem at all. So, um, I mean, what we usually like to say is that a person had a very clear idea on everything. That isn't how this happened at yeah. all. It was very much a, a bucket list of things that we love. Like, so we love comic books and we love different flavors of shooters and uh, we love like horror games as well. And we had all these different ideas about things that might be really fun. Um, and we decided to try and put it all in one package and see what happens. Uh, luckily for us, it seemed to come together into something that has its own sort of voice, which, I, which we're quite proud of. So tell us about a little bit about the mechanics as he's yeah. smashing. So as, as you can see, we, yeah, I mean, you, you can see straight away that we were, you know, trying to meld two different uh, shooter genres that very rarely have anything to do with one another. So we're big fans of twin stick shooters, mm -hmm. but we also um, wanted to see what could happen if we brought cover mechanics into the centre of the twin stick experience. And um, that was quite novel for us. We hadn't seen that done or combined in that way before, and that meant quite a lot of prototyping and testing, as, as always, to try and figure that out. But we're trying to get this clear sense of like a western style gunfight where you crouch behind cover, count your bullets, dash out, That's cool. do some damage and then get back into cover again. And nearly every system in the game is to try and do one of two things. Uh, the badges are either trying to get you out of cover or if you're out of cover they're trying to get you back into cover again. So we, it's got a very quite unique staccato pace to it. And the the um, the cover is breakable and explodes and stuff like that as you, as you go along. Yes. So they're trying to destroy the cover while you're trying to kill them. Absolutely, yeah. So with the classic Western shootouts, you'll dive behind cover, reload your weapons, and you have a bo a boost to you know, how quickly you can reload when you're behind cover. So there's good reasons to get in there. And but cover doesn't last forever. The great thing about it though is you can shoot from cover with complete impunity. If, if you're behind cover, even if you're shooting, the cover's going to take the damage, not you. But it doesn't last oh, forever. Nice. That's really cool. It does definitely look like a, a living, breathing comic book, which is... Oh, thank you very much. I really like That's the, exactly what we were hoping to hear. The, 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 you know, all of the characters have a lot of, like, interesting design. He's got the red mm -hmm. cape and kind of, like, the Ghost Rider flame. But then he has mm. this, like... I'm an art dude, so like, you know, looking at that, this is the first thing I, I kind of key into, but he has like the, the slash across his skull, which is really like makes him stand out. You know, I could definitely see figures and stuff made from this character. Oh yeah, definitely. I think a lot of our sort of love for different comic books shone through in a lot of the designs, especially when it came to like the main characters and uh, that appear in the title, for sure. Very good, you're playing well. <laughs> oh, as you can see, um, we've had to use quite a lot of interesting things with the different weapons you have as well. So shotguns have a very short range compared to rifles. And there's about four different flavors of weapons. There's uh, rifles, shotguns, pistols, and revolvers. And each of these squeeze 
the player into a different corner of the gameplay. So shotguns are great close up and have a wide arc, but you've really got to get out from cover to get close enough to use them most of the time, unless you're willing to sit put and wait for something to come to you. So can you tell us about the, uh, or tell the world about the story and the narrative behind what's going on? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'd love to, absolutely love to. So we are doing a quite a riff of the uh, kind of like a stranger in town, um, sort of classic um, Western style story. You don't know who you are. Um, you don't know who you were, um, but you know that there is a new place that you need to clean up. And, um, but this place, different from other Westerns, is uh, some is setting the afterlife, uh, but not your classical kind of Christian style afterlife that we thought. It's its own place. It's got its own kind of law, and this is a place which is shaped by the memories and fears uh, of the souls that are stuck there. And normally, stop the souls will pass through. Everything's fine, and they face some kind of judgment. The good ones head east, and the bad ones are sent west. But for oh, some reason, purgatory is stuck. People aren't leaving uh, when they should. And that's because something's gone wrong, which is what you're there to sort out. <laughs> oh, nice shot. That was like a money shot for sure. <laughs> I can't wait to see some of the bosses. I bet you they're, the design is outstanding. Oh, that. Yeah, that we've had a lot of fun designing a lot of these enemies. I mean, the other thing about the story is with the structure is a kind of a roguelite structure. So you never know what's around the next corner. We want that to, oh, we really, we really okay. want to make the player's bit, uh, skill build up and keep facing them with new surprises each run. But trying to mesh that with a clear story is a bit of a challenge actually. Yeah, so we had sure. to start. Uh, we had to start thinking about the story not as a straight line, but as a spiral that goes back around and back around to the same points. And what can we tell the player mm. in these known little areas of the game, and which is usually in between levels, it turns out. So there's a little cast of characters who will tell you a bit about themselves, a bit about your past, as well as recurring antagonists that you'll come across as bosses as the game moves forward. So is it so the the um, the enemy distribution is randomized and are like the is the cover randomized or the levels randomized or just mostly the enemy distribution? It is so the every room. Um, uh, so you're speaking to the coder here. So stand back. I'm going to start going into detail. Go I, in. I like go in. <laughs> so every room that you're in has been thought of as like a dozen different flavors of oh, encounters cool. so there's lots of different places where it might be a good place to have cover it might be a good place to have a, a column in the way and then also the rooms are all combined in different orders the contents of the room is different every time and also we have basically a like a magic bucket of baddies that we we put in a certain number of points and you say give us give us 30 points of baddies and it will shake itself and then pour out a few baddies for each room. So that allows us to have some degree on the exact number of enemies that you might have, but we kind of make recipes of enemies. So we always want to have one of these guys as a minimum, but we can never have more than two of these types of baddies. Oh, so you. when we throw that through a computer, we end up with what we hope is a best of both, a, sorry, a best of both where there are rules and structure to the kind of encounters that you have. It will never be a mob of purely melee guys. At the same time, it won't be the same every time either. It'll be different for every single room, every single run. That's cool. <sighs> Guys. <laughs> I was wondering about health, because I was like, I, I, it looked like I went to a room where I was like, sort of, was I saving my progress there? The, what, what was the? That's the right. Room? Yeah. So if if the uh, if the skull uh, flashes in the bottom right corner, yeah. So that ring, those are save points. So you can uh, recover your run back from there um, if you haven't died. So if you want to, you have to go and make a cup of tea or coffee. You can come back and continue your, your run from there. Um, so it's got an in-game save, so you can. You, uh, runs can get pretty long, so if you if you're like oh, I'm, I'm an hour in, but I don't want to lose my run, you can you can stop and come back later on. Okay. Um, and also, 
it's a rogue light, so there are extra abilities that you can permanently unlock. For example, a health flask, which lets you have one heal per run, followed by a better health flask with two heals per run, or rather two heals per level. And these things start to give you just a slight leg up at the start mm. of the runs. So it depends on how confident you are. You can, if you really need to, grind it a little bit just to give yourself a bit of a leg up. Um, or if you're feeling, you know, super on it from the start, you can get further without having to die too many times. West, this game is West of Dead looks dope, man. It's so um, good. Yeah, it's really cool. People are gonna definitely enjoy this. So it, uh, right now, can you wish list on Steam? I, I saw that the it's you can uh, play the demo on Xbox, right? Yes, you can. So you can play the demo on Xbox and Steam. It is currently on an open beta. And nice. I think I'm, I'm meant to say this, I can't see any notifications popping up. So if you play the, um, the open beta, I think you can get a discount on the launch, which is on Thursday. <gasps> Thursday wow. is the launch. So everybody Thursday. pick that up. Make sure to, um, to definitely, you know, check out this game. It's really awesome. Thanks for joining us. How can we find out more about you and your team and, and oh, well, anything else we you are... want to... Yeah, please. So we are Upstream Arcade. Um, Google us. Um, we should be. We should be there. I could. I won't do that right now. <laughs> but, yeah, Google us. Find out a bit more about us. And uh, this is West of Dead. Um, and yeah, the team we've got a very small team. Only four people. Oh, really? The, wow. the central team. So we're you know very excited slash nervous and, and hope that everyone has a lot of fun playing it. Cool. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks, Adam. That was uh, West of Dead. The game is cool. Shout out to to Raw Fury again for hooking them up with with uh, Ron Perlman and and just being amazing publishers. Um, next up, we have System Shock. Check out the trailer. So that was the System Shock trailer, which we um, showed yesterday on the Gorilla Collective for the first time. The game looks really amazing. Here we have Steven Kick, CEO of Night Dive Games, and it's great to have you here to talk with us, the CEO of Night Dive. How's it going? Good, good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm glad to uh, glad to be here to talk shock. <laughs> I thought you said talk shop Go or talk on. shiznits. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's so awesome to have you. I'm a big fan of like a lot of the stuff that you've you've remastered and the games that you've worked on previously. I think I was talking about like maybe a week before we knew you were you know going to be on the live stream about like Turok and and Sin Gold and and just a lot of the games that you've you guys worked on, which were. Uh, a big part of my childhood, you know, with my like voodoo card, you know, voodoo two card, you know, <laughs> yeah. VFX chip card and my like janky Celeron processor. But playing all those games back in the day, they're like the first 3D games. So it's cool that you were able to to jump in and and have your team work on System Shock. Um, congratulations on the success that you've had so far. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, you could say kind of the core philosophy of Night Dive is 
then to go out and find those games that you and I both played as kids and, and be able to resurrect them so that not only we can enjoy them, but uh, new generations can enjoy them as well. Yeah, that's, that's <clears throat> awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about like how System Shock like, came to be, um, this version of it? This version of it. Okay, so um, Night Dive started uh, at the beginning of 2012 with the re-release of System Shock 2, which up to that point had not seen a digital re-release of any kind. And the success of that is kind of what uh, catapulted Night Dive into the business of going out and finding other IP and other games to, to resurrect. Oh, cool. And um, System Shock was just one of those games that once we had the rights to it, we knew was kind of owed a remaster or a re-release of some kind because as good as it was back in 1994, uh, it was very obtuse. Uh, the control scheme was kind of notoriously difficult uh, to master. Um, 3D was still kind of on the on the cusp of, of widespread use in the industry. Uh, it was up against games like Doom. Uh, so it just didn't really have the chance to, to really breathe and to show what it had to offer. And so we thought it was just the perfect game to breathe new life into. And so we've completely redone the game from the ground up in Unreal Engine 4. Um, um, it started off as a Kickstarter project back in 2016, and it's grown and evolved to what we're playing now. What were some of the things that you did to make it more accessible? Uh, this one's going to seem fairly obvious, but uh, even adding something as simple as mouse look uh, oh, okay. does wonders for it. The original didn't have that. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you had to kind of click and drag the screen around to oh. move the viewport. And uh, we've since added mouse look into the original. Um, but this game is going to play very much like a, a contemporary first-person shooter. Um, we're going to add in tutorial tool tips to help people along the way so they understand what you know these implants do that you're installing now. Uh, the combat and everything is going to be familiar to anybody who's played a you know a first person shooter in the last uh, 15 20 years. Yeah, this is a, this is a game that definitely benefits from a uh, an upgrade, <laughs> a uh, modernization, and uh, this is really beautiful. Uh, in terms of you know how it looks, not only but uh, gameplay too, and I was noticing that like as you get close to things, they have they still have this sort of pixelated. Let me go to something like this, like this pixelated art style, which is very reminiscent um, of the. But then when, as you get farther away, you know you have that incredible lighting and and uh, those reflections and stuff. It looks awesome. Yeah, thank you. That this art style is something that we have taken a lot of pride in uh, because we did want to pay homage to the original in some way um, artistically. And one of the first things we did was um, actually brought on the original concept artist and main artist from the original oh, system shot to, awesome. to re-envision um, all the environments, all the enemies, all the weapons, pretty much everything. And so we've not only got to see his evolution as an artist over the last 20 years, but um, also exactly how System Shock would look today um, if it were updated. So this is as true to a, a, a new realization of that as, as humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to pick up that ammo. Getting really sucked into this game. Now. Yeah, <laughs> I just kind of want to let it, let the ambience roll through. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't mind watching. It's always a thrill to see somebody <laughs> play it for the first time. Yeah, it, you know, it, it was so hard to play uh, back in the day. I wasn't primarily a PC gamer. I had a Mac, but you know, it was one of those games where you're like, because Deus Ex for me was one of my favorite games, and um, and and this is obviously kind of a precursor to that, um, 
and uh, it's one, it's one of those games that you wish you <laughs> could have played more. So it's so it's so awesome that you've done this. You've gone to this effort, and this is funny too. It's like you've there there was no way to do something like this, uh, you know, with the the textures that they had, where it's like okay, enter the the keypad here. Um, yeah, you know what I just noticed is you're playing with a gamepad, and yes. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might be a lot more difficult um, just because we haven't really implemented um, full controller support yet. Like, it seems like you're getting by. Yeah. Um, sort of. But when the game does come out on, you know, PlayStation and Xbox and, and games that uh, are going to use that so control cool. scheme, it's going to be a lot more... Uh, Welcome uh, back fluid. to Citadel Station. Yeah. It feels Hold good on the gamepad. I mean, it does, as yeah. of now. But I definitely understand that. Year 2072. Ooh. And, and these are, this is the original audio, right? From... Yes, yeah, so right now all the audio logs and Shodan's audio is from the original game, and that's purely temporary. Okay. Uh, we figured, hey, we've got the audio. Let's let's use that um, to stub in while we're developing, and then as we kind of um, near the end of development, we'll go ahead and re-record all this audio with uh, professional voice actors and and uh, new lines. Right. I was I was wondering that, and it, it's it's it is a nice touch, though. It, you know, maybe as a something that uh, you know an option. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna keep it, but it it's it is fun to hear the old stuff. I remember playing this, and those dudes creeped me the hell out. Yeah, <laughs> it's still a creepy as hell. You uh, may want to use a meta patch pretty soon. Oh yeah. Um, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> this is where it's they, the uh, it's the red one all the way to the left. Oh okay, this one. Yeah. And how do I, uh, I click it? And, uh, I wish I could tell you on the keyboard. It's uh, you just hit one on the keyboard. <laughs> one. Okay, hold on. I've got a keyboard. Wait, uh, I have to get out of this. Do I? Oh, oh use. there you go. You could do. You yeah. could use use like that. Yeah. Oh, hold on. There you go. Ah, oh, nice. See, the gamepad is is working. Yeah. If I just do, make it happen. If I was good at it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh yeah, and I can select my gun. So the demo is out now, um, which is awesome that everybody can play it, and you can wish list it now on Steam, correct? That's right. Yeah. Nice. And um, it, it's out on uh, GOG and Steam currently. Okay, cool. And you're, when you release, are you going to release multi-platform simultaneously, or are you going to release PC first? Um, a simultaneous release is the plan, so we'll be hitting PlayStation, uh, Xbox, and PC all at the same time. Uh, but we're still a little ways off from that, so we'll see. But that is the plan. That makes sense. Do you, you don't have a release yet, or do you have one? It's to be decided. Makes sense. When it's uh, done. I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of at that stage right now where we've invested so much time. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're dead. <laughs> dead I, I, I can deal with this. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you, no. <laughs> you got deaded. Uh. Um, we're, we've invested so much time and, and so much uh, love and, and passion in this project, really, that um, it's going to be done when it's done. I, I know as, as cliched as that sounds, it's like, this is going to be perfect when it's released and, and we're not going to uh, make any exceptions. It totally makes sense. I mean, it, awesome. it's like a masterpiece. I know a lot of people were waiting for... Um, the trailer and when they saw the, the updated trailer yesterday they went crazy so that it's awesome to see that kind of love you know get pushed back into something that you love you know yeah and you know a lot of that is kind of owed to just the lineage that system shock has which yeah. spans as far as you know the bioshock games uh prey dishonored pretty much any immersive sim that's come after that is you know it owes its existence to system shock and there's a lot of fans uh, waiting for this, and we know you're waiting very patiently, and we're, we're doing our best <laughs> to deliver something that, that's going to be memorable and that is going to be worth the wait. Cool. Well, it was great having you on board. Thank you so much, Stephen, for uh, showing the game and talking about it. It's, it's cool to like see how the sausage is made and for folks in the chat you know, to, 
to learn about it too. So, um, yeah, shout shout out. Um, do you cool, have, thank you guys. How can we find more about your team and the game? Um, you can go to systemshock.com. That's the that's the easiest one. And we do actually still have a backer kit open for those who still want to back the project and, and score some really cool swag at the same time. Uh, we've got collector's editions, t-shirts, art books, all that stuff is up for pre-order right now. And uh, yeah, if you just kind of want to follow Night Dive Studio, you can follow us on Twitter. It's Night Dive Studio because we ran out of characters like you guys did. <laughs> yeah, Gorilla <laughs> Collect. <laughs> collect. <Yeah. laughs> I know how that is. So yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and everybody go try out the demo. Yeah. The wish list. It's going to be dope. Cool. It's Thank you guys. Cool. All right. Awesome. That was system shock. You did really well with the controller. <laughs> I did, pretty... I, I, yeah, I did better. I, it, this, I'm super excited about this game. Um, this whole genre, like he was saying, like the, the games that have come, come after this, it's had such a impact on the industry. And i um, super excited that, that they're not going to release it until they're ready because this is a super important game. So uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's shout out our sponsors again. We got Carlos Bardu uh, coming up with a, the Eternal Cylinder. I know you guys were looking for, in the chat, we're looking for that to roll you guys over. And it's coming up next. Uh, shout out to Idea Xbox Razor, Fully Illustrated, Wilmer Sound, AV Society, Astro, uh, we got a razor machine here. They've been dope. Um, also, shout out to IGN and ID at Xbox again, uh, uh, GameSpot and Twitch for really supporting the Gorilla Collective. We couldn't have done it without uh, their help showing these these games again. Um, the these independent game developers, large and small, came together to do this because there was a lack of E3, and we wanted to get visibility uh, for. You know the games that we've been spending so much time effort blood sweat and tears to make um yes please also uh if you have in your heart of hearts contribute to unicef naacp or game heads uh through the link below um and we are going to be rolling literally into the next game yes here's the trailer for eternal cylinder of destruction. No one survives alone. And that was the beautiful trailer for the Eternal Cylinder. Um, we do have Carlos on board to talk about the game. We're going to play the game. Hey, what's up, Carlos? Hello. How are you guys? Good great, here. great. Um, the game looks amazing. I think the first time we played it uh, was at Good Shepherd's like hidden area, 
at uh, Gamescom, okay. and it was so beautiful. Yeah. I remember seeing the game, um, like, when you first start. Was it in 2015, 2016? Around 2015, 2016, I did a, a type of, a, like, a small prototype I did with a colleague. Yeah. It wasn't expected to be, like, the official next Ace Team game that we were doing at the time. It was just a kind of a personal project, and uh, we took it to a GDC, like, to show it around, but then it started catching the attention of people and was like, wow, it seems like this is more than we anticipated. And it grew into this pretty large project. I would say definitely one of the biggest things we've, we've done to date. So yeah, it's been quite a trip. The game is so dope that people are accusing it of breaking the stream. Yes, I Yesterday. noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna- it doesn't break this one. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Uh, we hope so. When the cylinder comes, run because we don't want this the the stream to be steamrolled. We are going to be yeah. making a moat because everyone's so good in the chat. I know everyone's talking talking stuff in the chat right now. Shout out to the chat for being very hilarious and vocal. But we're going to play the game. Sure. Oh, Ooh. it's cool. I Ooh. hit continue. We're gonna we're gonna play in a continued state. It's gonna be great. I can let you. The voice inside the Trevum's memory. Maybe ah, you're the big. Uh, yeah, start, start, uh, go to the main menu and maybe start from menu. the beginning. Okay, let's yeah. do that. The, that. That is going to show the new, new game. game. Cool, uh, awesome. Yeah, just walk us through it. The you know uh, the gameplay and and what's going on. So uh, it's a de definitely a different game. It's a game about these little creatures which are being introduced here in this intro cinematic, which are the Trebum. The Trebum are directly inspired by Qbert. Um, we um, did this funny little head creatures with a trunk and, and two, two legs, very similar. But they have this ability to mutate and eat things in the environment and transform. So you're a family of these little creatures that are born in this alien wor world, as you see, as soon as you like exit the uh, intro cinematic, you start right there in, in right in front of the cylinder, and 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 they're tossed. Uh, you, you appear in this this very hostile alien world, and it's a survival game, but not it's not a survival game. It's an adventure game, but not an adventure game. It's it's really something that's quite different. I, people have been comparing it to Spore, but really. Nothing like sports at all. Maybe it may, may, maybe the looks of some of the creature designs and stuff like that, but uh, right. it's its own thing. It, it, it... Yeah, this this feels really unique. It's game. very intuitive, like how you have to combine um, like different elements, run. run things that you have to. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's... If if you look backwards, uh, you 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 start and immediately you have this massive cylinder that's crushing the whole world. You don't know what's going on, and one of the big difficulties we've had with the project is definitely the the, the technical aspect is, is 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 pretty big in in this project because we have uh, everything that's being destroyed here is actually dynamic. It's not oh, that we fake it only for the we we didn't only fake it for the introduction of, of the game at the scene like. Many games like maybe have some very cool starting uh, setup where you have like lots of maybe particles and stuff. But the truth is that in, in, for, for this game, the cylinder is rolling at times all the time, and it can get to pretty. It, it, it can go pretty fast, so we had to have all sorts of different solutions for uh, static objects, uh, like uh, solid objects, like rocks and things that you can see kind of break and explode, but we also have trees that bend and, and many different things, the creatures that can crush and stuff. Yeah, he was making me nervous, kept looking behind him, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> look forward, yeah, we've been, going. <laughs> at the beginning we had the cylinder going like a, at a stable speed and, we, and people were dying in the very first uh, minutes yeah. of the game, so we don't want that to happen. Um, but right now that the cylinder has stopped, you start sort of start getting introduced into the basic, the, the, the first basic things that the creature starts. And as you'll see, you get these like kind of weird grasshoppers, and they drop this little egg there. And if you eat it and choose it, you'll notice one of the main features of the game. Right now, our little friend is eating that piece, and boop. Mm. You grow these grasshopper legs, which allow you to sort of jump out of the ditch and sort of start exploring and playing around. So the game is uh, 
separated in a structure that's not very typical um, compared to other titles in, in a sense that, yes, it is procedurally um, generated the terrain, but at certain moments we have uh, the, the game go into like pre-designed uh, areas where we want to further the narration of the game, where we would want to further the story and, and uh, do specific puzzles or specific areas. So if you, for instance, if you, you can see that, that, that fish over there, that, the one that's swimming over there. Uh -huh. If you can go and eat it, try, try, try to go in there and eat. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. If you go out and eat it, you'll notice that you'll acquire another mutation. The mutations stack up, stack on on each other. Not not all of them, but now <laughs> you okay. have a big body, so this allows you to have a a, a bigger inventory. You have to be. Oh. This game has a lot of features. You have a stamina wheel for swimming, and all mutations can take in the can alter different aspects of the of the, of the trouble in, in, in many ways. The, so these are. Okay. Oh, sure. Sure. No, talk about it. this thing is crazy looking. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's one of the animals of the game. It's it's it's, it's it, 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 they just wander around there. Those are <laughs> those roll over. They can try to roll roll over you, and so there's a lot of things that roll over you in this game. <laughs> <laughs> but we have like this whole ecosystem of different alien creatures, and they're separate by different biomes. So we have a, this is like the main what we call the alien savanna biome. Um, and you go around there, you go. You can go to the first elder. There's an elder over there, which is gonna introduce you to one nice. of us. I like the role. You can roll. It's so dope. Yeah, we made we made rock of ages. Yes, that's what like. I was <laughs> gonna say. It's like reminiscent. We like rolling, so <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Surrounded by this light, the Trebum new. So as I, as I was saying, there's different biomes with different. To, totally different types of environments, and there's different mm -hmm. creatures that you'll encounter. They're, they range in scale and size, and some are predators, some are herbivores, some are very dangerous, some are not dangerous at all. We're trying to make this kind of ecosystem in which the, the player gets to explore. But uh, what makes it unique also is, is the aspect of how progression move, goes on with the cylinders sort of forcing you to move forward and we have to sort of build the world as as you move forward so we, we constantly have to load in the environment the inner voice said run mm. the towers would not stop the cylinder unless they were That's so cool for these guys so now you should go to the tower that you see you should roll to any of those two towers you can check you see the big red beam yeah go that that, that direction for instance okay. yeah. either of those He's getting nervous. You see that? A You're, pig. He's like walking slowly. <laughs> Freaking out. That, the, 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 the music is, is intended to be. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. You have to reach that tower over there. I'll make this it. is the very beginning, so you're 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 basically learning the. Step on the symbol, or the cylinder would not cool. be stopped. Later on in the game, the cylinder gets this red glow, and it really catches a lot of speed. I mean, it goes really, really fast. So. You're basically racing, racing your way to for your life, eh? and w with all these little creatures, you have to really, really run away. Mm. Oh, look at that guy! <laughs> yeah, that's the we we friendly we call him the chomper. So. Yeah, you should stand there and let him eat you, Alex. <laughs> I have to, I have to stay on the blue. Oh, I've got to stop the cylinder. Right, stop it up. There you go. Oh, there you're safe, and you can shoot it. I was scared. I thought Chomper was going to smash you on while you were stopping it. He's a vegetarian. Yeah. Wow. So, the structure of the game is a little bit like that, but not entirely. You have to remember that this is a kind of the onboarding aspect part yeah. of the game. So, totally. here's a little bit more peaceful. There are creatures that can actually kill you. Uh, but uh, to the right, you'll notice there was this kind of snowy area that you yeah. can go over there. So that's that's a small brief introduction to one of the different biomes. So if you go there, you'll notice that the treble will start shaking and because it's cold, and you're going to actually start losing health. But if you move yeah. to the left over there, and I'm, I'm, I'm just cheating here, I'm telling you, you can <laughs> see those like puffy balls near to those corals, things that are right behind you, oh. if you could go. Right back. 
uh, to oh. the uh, behind you, right behind you, uh, where you see that sort of coral, coral things. Coral. Oh, this. Like a yeah, those. No, 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 no. Turn no, around. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Turn okay. around to go the other right way. Right there. Right there. Right. Into right. the snow. Into the snow. <laughs> okay. Okay. The Sorry, there's a little snow. bit of a delay. I think. Okay. Yeah. There. Oh. You see the puppy purple balls to yeah. the left. To the left. Oh. To your left. The left. There, 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 and you can find other Trebon um, who will join you in your adventure. So there's a lot of different aspects of how we uh, allow people to explore different areas. So this is the Chomper, but this is the furry one from the, the snow areas. You have to be careful. Oh, because he will, cool. He will eat you. He will eat you. Yes, do not eat him. Okay, so he's, <laughs> he's not as vegetarian as I thought he might be. No, 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 no. <laughs> Cool. And when you get a bunch of, when you get the different troubles, you could switch between them, right? Yeah, for instance, there's one over there who's Ooh, in his little home. Oh, cool. Good and now out. you have a little AA partner who will follow you. And that's a, a central aspect of the game is uh, getting other Trebum and growing like this herd of little creatures, which is going to follow you during the adventure, and you can switch between them. And you can stack on on them, their own powers and their own abilities. So, it's a game. Of, it's it, it's a, again, it's a narrative game where you have. There's a reason for all this. It's just not a procedurally generated sort of world where you get to goof around. But that 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 is a a lot of fun in the game. But there's a purpose. There's more than a purpose. There's a reason for 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 why the why the cylinder is here. Who you are. What's going on in this world. And there's tons of depth in this game. I mean, there's the exploration. There is even when I when I was trying it earlier, you have like a uh, a stamina system too, where you have to make sure that you're yeah. you're eating and and that kind of thing, right? And you're yeah, that gets introduced later in the game. It's a little bit the uh, like you you get the energy pouch and the stomach where you have to you have to feed your creatures. So if you jump there, you can get that egg. Oh, I can j jump up here. You, yep, you can just just jump up there, and you can grab that egg with the. Now, you, if you go to where you can see this, these little behind the other way, uh, you can see that thing there where you can heat the egg if you leave it there. Oh, oh so that's another trouble. Uh, yeah. So, uh, wait. No, just, just, if you stand uh, there, it's gonna work. Okay. There it is. Cool. So it's heating the egg, and that would allow you to get yeah. another little friendly little trap. You can actually name them. Oh, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's going to work with a with a controller now, but so I think we're going to just leave it at that. Okay. He's going to name it me. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, hope just just it. Get <laughs> I look extra confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> the confused trouble. Yeah. He's so the the the, the friendly trouble that they they help you in the. Uh, it's not only about uh, get, getting more of these and and allowing your family to grow. It also. Uh, there's also certain puzzles which will requ have requirements of how many creatures you need in order to unlock the areas. Uh, if we want to uh, see more of the content, you can go to the left of this large mountain, uh, and you're going to see one of the these giant serpent creatures, which are called the Trawala. Am I going the right will... way? Oh, no. The, the other way. The other, other way, way. Yeah. Okay. To the left of the mountain and just keep on going. <laughs> left of it. To the left, 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 left. Go left. Oh, left. sorry. No, Wait. The other way. This no. way. <laughs> this, my, my that way, that way, that way, that way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I'm the most annoying. Yeah, he's going the opposite way on purpose and naming his friends <laughs> Trebles. <laughs> uh, they're on the adventure with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's sick.
Yikes. So right right beneath this colossal creature, there's a sort of entry to a uh, interior, one, one of what we call the Elder Caves, because there's basically these uh, indoor environments where you can had been built explore more here you get more introduction to the story of the game and how that in this large um, and dangerous as world, aspects about the some the game now you could have made the way you resolved the this this part of the, the the beginning of the game was getting these three specific trebum but there are other in the outdoor environment which you can get in different ways and see and discover other mutations and that's the idea that people different people will will solve this in different ways that's cool uh, or there's a lot of backstory in... and, and history that you've created for this game yeah well one of the games we're most well known for is Xeno Clash yeah. and a lot of a lot of people like uh, appreciate the, the type of surreal worlds that we create but also the surreal stories that we, mm -hmm. we make for those worlds so here for instance um, you start getting some some puzzles so you have this strange door with a ancient statue with this box shaped, shaped statue and you're getting introduced to this strange ingredient so it's 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 all part of the 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 puzzle we have a uh compendium for creatures food at the moment you don't have the mutation which allows you to add uh, uh creatures into into your compendium but you'll notice this area open go there one thing you haven't showed that much is the is throwing water with with your trunk so with the right trigger you can shoot if you hold oh cool and they join in <laughs> and they join in so that's awesome another organic piece one. yeah i think you're did I... you should eat that one okay you should definitely eat that one He's slipping down of the stairs. Oh. That's one of the. It's... I, th I thought he was transforming. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ah, there he is. Nice. So now you nice. are part part of the puzzle. That's, you that's... are now part of part of the puzzle. So you would have cool. tried to enter enter that that socket before. It wouldn't have opened. So now with the square trebum, you can access to this area, and you find yourself with Gromo, the elder. Inside the cave, a Trebum found a living. So the game is. It had been waiting in this chamber. Since you're in this kind of alien world, uh, at the beginning we didn't have the narrator in the game. Uh, that's something that came later during. This game has been a lot of experimentation. The, the, if you looked at the original design document, uh, there's the the, the the core concept of the game is there, but we started seeing what things worked and what things didn't work. Uh, through a process of discovery, because it's very different to anything and anything else that we've ever ever done, or we really can't drop our parallels with other titles. So, uh, for instance, the narrator was something that came later on. He he's actually part of the story. He's not just there to help players, but he's he's an actual character. So, yeah, it's it, it's it's a very unique game, and we're we're really excited about it. The game is is really gorgeous. It's so open. There's so many things to do and expanse it. It's it's very expansive. Um, when are you releasing? Do you have a release date yet? No, we do not have a release date. We have an idea of when we might be able to yeah. release. But <laughs> if I think some people will get mad. So. Yes, totally understand that from experience. Let's, um, let's not yeah. upset the internet yeah, more than we it's, already uh, have. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's 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 really awesome. Um, are, can you wish list it and? And where will you be able to find it? Yes, it can be wishlisted on the Epic Games Store. Uh, we're also launching on uh, PlayStation and Xbox, but I don't think we have wishlist there. Um, it will be a simultaneous uh, release, but um, yeah, we don't know when. Cool, cool. How can we find out more about the Eternal Cylinder? There. Oh yeah, I should uh, call out that there's a beta. Uh, a beta. You just have to res uh, register at eternalcylinder.com. Uh, and yeah, and if you want to know more about Ace Team, aceteam.cl. We're a Chilean studio, so not com, cl. Uh, to check more about. Cool. Uh, Eternal Cylinder and other Ace Team games. 
thank you so much for hopping on board, Carlos. It's awesome to see this game. I was so happy that we were able to to showcase the trailer the other day um, and then actually get to play so people could see exactly what it is, especially since it was blowing up in the chat. And the yeah. cylinder did not destroy us today. <laughs> we're rolling out I'm with the cylinder. I'm also disappointed that it didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I thought this was one I did well at. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be memes. We're making them. So yeah, okay, cool. awesome. I'm looking forward to them. All right, thank you so much. That was the Eternal Cylinder. Um, the game is is gorgeous. You did okay. Thanks yeah. for for naming me uh, one of the troubles. I, I oh appreciate yeah, appreciate it. Well, it was great. yeah. Um, this is a really creative game. This is really amazing. There's something in the water in Chile. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been an amazing experience. We have one trailer that came from New Blood just in that we want to showcase before we head out. Let's roll the New Blood trailer. And that was Gloomwood from New Blood. Thank you so much, New Blood, for dropping a, an exclusive trailer of the Gorilla Collective. Uh, the Gorilla Collective is now over. This it's been an amazing experience. Thanks for hopping on board, Alex. Oh yeah, thank and you. And this amazing space at Wilmer Sound. Uh, we want to thank um, all of our partners again: IGN, Gamespot, Valve. Um, IG, uh, I said IGN twice. <laughs> kind of funny, of sure, of course. ID at Xbox, Astro Razor, everybody who's been working with us, uh, Ryan behind the boards and Tracy and, and everyone else. Um, it's been an amazing experience. Now we're going to go back to Greg. Peace. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The Gorilla Collective is done. Over three days, we've shown you nearly 90 games from almost 80 teams. On behalf of The Mix, Kind of Funny, and every creator who took part in this event, we cannot thank you enough. We hope you all have a fantastic, not E3, E3, I don't know, what are we calling? There's just showcases and events every day now. But for real, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your support, and know, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.